back for our second um, uh, uh, payments dialogue here. I have, tell me, like, tell me exactly how you pronounce your name. I, like, I know the American pronunciation. I've actually heard two American pronunciations. How do you pronounce your name? <laughs> actually, it's Matias. Matias. Okay. Yes. Got it. So I'm here <laughs> with Matias from P Pedidos, yeah, and i um, really excited to talk some today about uh, LATAM and dig into some of the payments uh, 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 infrastructure, the payments landscape in, in Latin America. Um, and so I, I'd like to just open up and, and start out by asking you to tell me a little bit about yourself and your background and Pedidos Ya and, and kind of what, uh, what Pedidos Ya does. Great. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me. This is great. I, I love uh, having the opportunity of sharing what, what we are doing here. It's, you know, it's like a, it's a, it's something that uh, everybody doesn't know. It's so complicated and so complex, the payments world and the, and the fraud world. So even between software developers, it's like, ah, so you send, uh, send somebody an amount and it gets charged on the card. Yeah. Well, that's a lot of, of <laughs> that's more that's to it. More, that. That's more to it. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, well, to tell you a, a bit about myself, I'm a software developer, I'm in Uruguay. Uh, I lived uh, literally in Brazil for a while, so uh, my main languages are Spanish and Portuguese, and, and I try to speak English. <laughs> uh, You're doing great. But, but I mean, uh, as a software developer, you have to speak English because everything is in English. I've been working in Pedidosia for like five years now. Uh, previously, I worked in a lot of uh, software factories. Uh, Pedidosia is my, my first uh, kind of uh, product center and company. And I'm very, very proud of what we are doing. Uh, we, we grew a lot these years and the market is changing and we're doing lots of uh, innovative, not things every day, so it's great. Um, maybe about the company, um, I, I think you, you don't know it, but uh, in the US there are many similar uh, companies. Pediasha focuses on uh, mainly on food delivery, but uh, currently we are expanding a little more to making uh, everything come to you. It, it's like you are in your couch at home with your cell phone and you think of anything and our, our objective is to get it to you. <laughs> so, um, as I said, our, our main focus is food. So we, we have a lot of experience in, in, in food delivery, but right now we are making uh, groceries, pharmacy, um, drinks. For example, if you have a, a party and we went out of alcohol or ice we can deliver it to you <laughs> so that, that that's our, our job awesome that's really cool i'm gonna like i have a few questions too about uh, delivery because it fascinates me but uh, <laughs> um so and and around like before we dig into that though i want to ask a little bit about you know latin america and um Tell me, tell me a little bit about, um, you know, how y'all take payments there. Like, what, what would you see uh, as, as major differences between the payments landscape in Latin America versus the U.S.? Well, to answer that question, let me tell you a story <laughs> so that I put you in context. Uh, I'm, I'm not from the capital of uh, Uruguay. I'm from uh, the countryside. And last week, when I was talking uh, to Peter about doing this, this interview, uh, something very funny happened, and I think I should tell it. <laughs> I went to the countryside to visit my family, and I went to a, to a, like a, yeah, a, a mini supermarket. And I, when, I went to, when I got my things, I went to the cash register and gave them my card. And they said, like, no, 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 we don't take that. How? It's, it's like credit card. I'm not trying to pay with Apple Pay, you know? <laughs> it's a credit card. Um, and, and I didn't have cash in my wallet. 
So <laughs> when I went to, to the cash register and, and, and I showed the, the card, that, that new thing, <laughs> they, they said like, no, no, we, we don't accept that. I don't trust uh, those things. I don't get my money right away. I like seeing the, the, the bills, you know? Mm -hmm. This is a, a, a business owner. <laughs> um, and I said like, well, I don't have cash. So he said something that it was awesome. Uh, he said, I can put you, I can open like an account, a trust account in the market. He had like a, a, a little notebook and each sheet was, had a name of a person, you know? And there he, he kept like a, a balance. <laughs> uh, so you kept your, your debt. I could take the things and uh, go to my home. And uh, later, another day maybe, or next month, <laughs> I could go to, to the market and pay. So I think it's a great example of how, uh, uh, this is Uruguay, but I think it happens in all of Latin. Uh, we are still a little, uh, a little bit scared about uh, technology and not think, seeing things happen in real life, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we have a lot of, of personal trust and we don't uh, trust in, in digital things. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, when I say like, okay, let me transfer, give me your bank account and I can transfer money to yours. And it's like, how? No, no, give me, <laughs> give me money. <you> know? <laughs> so, um, uh, it's a continual struggle to, to convince people to, to move on, <laughs> you know. Um, right now, we are in 30% um, uh, online payment share in Payasha. Uh, that's average in, you know, of Latin. In some countries, there, there's a little more adoption, like Chile, for example. They're great. Uh, but here in Uruguay, it's like, 25% or 30% because of how people are, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I'm talking about customers and business owners. The restaurants uh, don't want to accept credit cards and the customers don't want to put their cards in, in a website or in a, in a right. app. But I think good, thi good things are happening. Uh, we are showing people how easy it is to, to, to not have cash, to just... Um, Wait for the delivery guy, take your food and eat. You don't have to make a transaction there. Uh, for example, Uber is helping a lot with that. Uber here only accepts a credit card. So mm -hmm. it's, it's like um, Uber is extremely better than taxis here. So you have the customer, uh, you, you win the customer there. And when you create the account in Uber, there's not an option for cash you know so uh, you have to put your credit card and everybody is like oh no what do, I do? what do I do but they want to use uber so much that they end up putting the card there and I think that's great for us because it makes the, the person get to know uh, online payments it's like mm -hmm. the future <laughs> right right um, so I guess the the question I'd have is, you know, as you're doing, you're trying, you're trying to build a delivery company, and yet you end up running smack dab into this payments, uh, all these payments challenges. I mean, how much, how much of your job do you feel like is doing delivery logistics, and how much of the job is doing payments at this point? Well, uh, my job, my personal job. Well, I, um, oh, I guess. Yeah, well, yeah, the company, Pedioja, um, belongs to a group of companies. Uh, um, it's called Delivery Hero. They are based in, in Berlin. And we are like uh, a lot of companies all over the world, like Asia, uh, Europe, Middle East, and Latin America. We are doing like the same or similar things in, in a, lot of, a lot of the countries. Um, so we are a, a big team. And we have people specialized in delivery. You have teams that I have no idea what they do. <laughs> uh, 
For example, uh, there's a team specialized in optimizing the routes for the deliveries, you know, where to have uh, our bikes uh, to wait for, for, for orders and where to put them before they, they deliver, sorry, after they deliver, if they go back or they go to another restaurant. There's a, a lot of logistics that I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, when, when I started at the company, we were like 20. So I was able to answer all the questions that you had. <laughs> yeah. Right now, we are like, I don't want to like, well, counting the delivery guys, the riders, as, as, we, as we call them, we are like 2,000 people, I think, mm. or more. So uh, I'm focused, I'm very focused on payments uh, in the checkout part of the, the user experience, user journey, uh, but we do a lot. There's a lot of optimization of what the user does, how we, um, how the, how we pre present the offer to a user. You know? uh, I mean, uh, one year ago, we were just, uh, giving a, a list of restaurants to a user and that's all. Um, we started showing more pictures, we, you know, you, you want to see the food that you're gonna eat. Uh, so we started um, sending our, our own photographers to the restaurants and taking mm. real pictures of the food. Uh, we also added groceries and pharmacies, so the menus that we show have to be different. Uh, in, a, in a supermarket you have like, uh, you know, 500 products, so you can't make them a, a list, a scoring list. Right. <laughs> uh, so there's people here specialized in, in a lot of things. We do a lot of tracking what the user does when he when he leaves another unfinished. Why did he do that? That. So my job here is to focus on when the user already chose what he's gonna eat or what he wants. Um, my job is to uh, make, make the money uh, move, you know? <laughs> <laughs> make it go. Uh, yeah, and that's a lot. And uh, when we started with, with the payments uh, team, we thought our, our goal was gonna be uh, like charge uh, a certain amount of money, but uh, something incredible happened and it was fraud. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, now we are. I changed my email signature to payments and fraud <laughs> because uh, our team right now is it's, uh, uh, very focused on preventing fraud. You know, the, uh, trying to uh, realize if, if the user that it's trying to buy is a, it's, it's a real user, it's somebody with the intention of eating that or or reselling it or trying to test a card. Um, we are, unfortunately, we are uh, a very good uh, target for people trying to test cards because we have like a very little amount, small amount. Uh, so we, we have a lot to do. We, we did, we already did a lot and we have many things pending. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I really love my job. It's, it's like, continuously changing and very dynamic. All our code can change from uh, one day to, to the other. When, when a new developer enters the team, I say like, forget everything about um, requirements and, 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 you know, and permanent things. And forget about it. <laughs> we, have, we are always uh, trying things, changing, changing things. Um, when we find that a frost, fraudster discovered a weakness, we want we go running to, to improve it, so it's uh, very dynamic. So uh, that, like, since a significant portion, I'm assuming a significant portion of your transactions are cash on delivery. Mm -hmm. So uh, do, you, do, you ha do you have fraud issues there as well? Um, where does most of the fraud lie? Does most of it lie in the online transactions or the cash? Uh, let me see. Well, most of the transactions, the fraud transactions are uh, online because, as I said, it, it's somebody try, uh, testing a card or maybe doing some carding, testing a lot of cards. Um, the, the, the real life fraud, it's, it, it's real, it happens, 
but it's a little bit, a lot of, a lot more, uh, yeah, smaller. So, sorry. Uh, so I'm I'm curious, like backing up a little bit to the wider delivery market. Um, was home delivery of food from restaurants and these other goods was that already a common thing in um, your markets? Because I know, for instance, in the U.S., we have more and more delivery services now uh, delivering a wide range of things. But when I was growing up, it was strictly restaurants. And each restaurant sort of had their own delivery setup. But I know other countries have other setups around these things. So I'm kind of curious what the before uh, sort of this new wave of online delivery stuff popped up. What, what, did, uh, what did things look like in Latin America for delivery? Mm -hmm. um, well, well, there I have to... to like separate the answer uh, in countries. Yeah. <laughs> Here in Uruguay, for example, distances are, are a, lot, a lot shorter. We are a very small country and the capital is very small. So everything is like five minutes or 10 minutes from you. So um, delivery, well, yeah, um, restaurant delivery always existed and, and it was by phone. You called and, and you argued with the, with the guy like, <laughs> how many different tastes that you have and you forget the list and please repeat. <laughs> uh, yeah, it always existed, but um, delivery of other things here in Uruguay is uh, a new thing. Mm -hmm. Because when you think about, well, uh, I went out of I don't know, toilet paper, it was like extremely easy to you to get to go and in five minutes you, you get to a supermarket. Um, but in other countries, in, in bigger countries like Brazil or, or I don't know, uh, Colombia, um, it, it's a lot of uh, distance that you have to cover. So the delivery of, of other things already existed. Mm -hmm. And what we are doing now, uh, us and obviously other companies also, um, is, is trying to, to create a new a new way of getting your things, you know, to making, right. I call it uh, uh, making people even lazier than yeah. they already have. <laughs> <laughs> you a whole generation of couch potatoes. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, I mean, one of the good things about my job is that I'm a user of the right. product, you know? <laughs> so everything I do is to make me a, a, a bit lazier. <laughs> um, so, but uh, one, uh, one interesting thing about the restaurant delivery uh, f uh, feature is that we, also, we are also changing how we, we make the delivery in the restaurant. For example, you mentioned the, the, the restaurant had their, their own uh, fleet of motorbikes. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that, that we are changing is that we provided the, the logistics. It's like a, a Uber for food, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we have our bikes and we send them to a restaurant and pick the food and take the food to the user house. Um, another thing that we are changing, um, not in, in Uruguay, but it's very common in Asia, for example, in, in our, our partners in Asia, uh, it's what we call uh, cloud kitchens. Um, you know, the, the main reason why restaurants exist uh, is that you, you want to, well, you want to eat, that's uh, right. obvious. <laughs> but uh, the main reason why the restaurant, I think uh, the main reason why the restaurant has tables in it, it's because you want to eat uh, you your food warm, you know, uh, fresh, freshly uh, yeah. preparated. So you put tables at the restaurant because uh, it, it's like two meters from you, three meters from you. Um, but we are optimizing so much the logistics to, to, get you, to get food to you that we are able to uh, create restaurants that uh, don't exist, or kind of don't exist, you know? They don't have a space for you to go and eat there. Right. Um, that's, that's something that appeared uh, thanks to, to the food delivery applications. You have restaurants that are extremely small, they have like one uh, table or maybe no tables and just two chairs maybe. Uh, and they are full of delivery guys at the door because they are 
always uh, making the units. And they are extremely optimized so that you can get your food uh, in the same time uh, that you could, that you would uh, receive the food in the restaurant, you know, mm -hmm. 10 minutes or maybe less. And in Asia, uh, you, you, well, I, I think it's going to come to, to LATAM, I suppose in the US it, it, it already exists. And uh, these cloud kitchens are like restaurants that do, they don't have a, a sign on, yep. on, the, on the door. You know? uh, it's only a kitchen and the, the chef opens the door and there's a guy waiting uh, in the motorway and you get your food in five minutes. Um, that's ex extremely useful in Asia because uh, you have millions of people living in, in a city. Right. So if you, ha if you have the opportunity to um, squeeze a, a restaurant in there in, in a populated area, uh, you have the opportunity to serve a lot of people. Yeah. So may maybe somebody, a restaurant owner or, or a chef, doesn't have to invest so much and they have the opportunity to, to, to show what they are doing, they are doing to share their food. Uh, and that's for me it's a great idea yeah it's really cool so uh kind of last question uh a lot of the reason you know that i i get to talk with you is y'all use Spreedly, and i'm particularly curious about you know how does um the ability to use multiple gateways uh in and interact with multiple payment back ends like how does what what how does that affect your payments flow? Why is that important for the kind of work that y'all are doing? Yeah, it's a mess. <laughs> uh, when we started uh, around 2015, I think, uh, our first idea was like, well, let's integrate with a payment provider. and Let's choose one and go with it. And uh, we failed <laughs> because we, um, for example, PayPal is not an option in Latin. Uh, mm -hmm. there's, a, um, the, the, there's not enough penetration because of, because of what I said about putting your credit card on the internet. People don't trust things like PayPal. Um, there's no Apple Pay, Android Pay, nobody. It, I think younger people are, are starting to to trust that and also to wait for it and, and want it. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the larger percentage of people uh, didn't trust that. So it isn't uh, an attractive market for uh, big players in the PSP world, in the gateway world. So we couldn't find a gateway that covered all of our countries. We are like in nine countries. Uh, we didn't find a provider that didn't cover all of the cards that we wanted to accept. Mm -hmm. So maybe we found one that only accepted uh, Visa and MasterCard and American Express, but we wanted to accept uh, local cards or maybe smaller regional cards. So we ended up with a ecosystem of uh, 10 or even 11 providers. Yeah. Uh, depending on the country, depending on the card, uh, each provider is better or worse with a, a type of card, a type of issuer, a type of operation type, of credit, debit. Uh, you, in some countries, you have different um, payment methods. For example, in Chile, it's very common to make bank transfer. I think in the US, it's called direct debit. Yeah, yeah, direct you debit go, or ACH. When you get the, the, uh, redirected to the bank page. Mm -hmm. um, in your way, it's, it's not common, it doesn't exist. So, it, uh, well, in Brazil, they, are, they, are, they have a lot of uh, options. They have more options and they have more, more fraud, fraud mm -hmm. because of that. <laughs> uh, so we had have, we have to adapt to each country. Uh, uh, so it, it became, speaking in, in terms of software, technically it, it became a mess because you have to uh, consider all the different kind of response messages that you get. 
you have to keep in mind all the possible states that a payment has. For example, some providers allow uh, authorize and capture in, in two steps, and some of them don't. Right. And some of them allow partial refunds, some of them don't. Uh, so it's a, it's a jungle. <laughs> um, what we what we are trying to do, and that's why we got to know Spritly, is to unify that. Um, Try to get the opportunity to sleep at night. You know, right? Right, <laughs> right now, my, my job is like um, everything can uh, break down from one minute to the other. You know, and, mm -hmm. and what went down and when and whose fault is it? Right now, involves like uh, I don't know twenty uh, actors because you have all the payment providers, all the anti fraud providers. In some cases, we speak directly to issuers. So I, I, my phone is, is loaded with lots of contacts <laughs> that I call at night. Our, 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 our peak hours at like, are like uh, dinner or, or lunch. So mm -hmm. I'm always, uh, also um, weekends or, or days with rain or days where there's an important match Right, soccer match. So when people are enjoying their meal, I am like on the phone, <laughs> two phones at the same right. time. <laughs> so uh, one of our, of our goals uh, in the short term, I would say, is to try to um, solve, to, to reduce the number of, of people that we have to, 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 to contact when somebody goes wrong. Um, to reduce or or maybe standardize, standardize uh, what we say to the customer because uh, we have like a different array of uh, possible errors mm -hmm. and um, uh, getting to know a, a player like, like Spridly is pretty good for us because it solves a, a, a headache for us and, and allows us to think of, of new things. Today we are so um, yeah. So surrounded by uh, problems and possible problems that right. we can't think think of, of of future things, new new features, something so so little and, and simple as, for example, using the phone camera to scan your card. That's something that that it's getting um, pushed away in, in our planifications because because we have things that are are currently on fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that 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 gif with the dog uh, drinking coffee and, and all the room is on fire. Yes, that's mine. <laughs> that, that, that's mine. That's that's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, hopefully we can be the cup of coffee and not the fire. So. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you so much for, for coming on and chatting with me. I find the different markets fascinating. Um, I think we all wish that we could just pick the, the one provider uh, when we start out at these things. And then you get into payments. And it, I mean, it's fascinating. It's endlessly fascinating. Just all these different things that people do to exchange money and, and to exchange goods. But boy, it's complicated. And, and uh, it, it's, it's great to hear some about uh, what's going on in Latin America. So thanks for coming on. Thanks to you. It's a pleasure talking about this. And I, I love sharing my, my suffering with you. I, I think you, <laughs> you understand right. me. <laughs> we can commiserate together. It's great. <laughs> yeah. All right. Great. Thank you very much. Yep.